All right, good morning, everybody. The ongoing quest for knowledge of all things decimal related still continues. Welcome to Lesson 70. Today we're talking about writing equivalent decimal numbers. And that word equivalent is just a fancy way of saying equal. So to start off with something that we learned yesterday that some decimal numbers can be equivalent or equal because nothing is the same as zero. So to kind of illuminate right now, here we have an example of six tenths and over here we have 60 hundredths. They are exactly the same amount, aren't they? If you just look at pure blue space, because what we know about tenths is that we said it's the same as a dime, right? So six dimes is 60 cents. 60 hundredths, we said a hundredth is the same as a penny, right? Well, 60 pennies is a hundred cents. Because if you look here in the hundreds place, nothing is the same as zero. So they're equal. Or equivalent. So if we take a look here where it's asking us to write 12 and 6 tenths with two decimal places. So the big thing to remember right now, anything on the left side of the decimal point, that's where the no-name group starts, right? Anything on the right side of the decimal point, those are the decimal numbers. So they want you to write it with two decimal places. Well, you already have one decimal place right here with the six tenths. So what do you imagine I'm going to put here where there's currently nothing to make it equivalent? All you'd have to do is write in a zero for that second decimal place because zero is the same as nothing. Check out this one. We're going to now write 9 and 3 tenths with three decimal places. Well, 3 tenths is my first decimal place. So now in my second decimal place, I'll add a zero for the second. And I'll add another zero here for my third. Changing 9 and 3 tenths into 9 and 300 thousandths. They are equal or equivalent. So let's go ahead and do some comparing here. Do you remember the steps from yesterday? First, look at the whole number side. We have a tie. Now look at each individual place value. Here we have four in the tenths place. Here we have a zero in the tenths place. 4 is greater than 0, so I'm going to use a greater than sign. A lot of times kids will trip on this one. Do I have a decimal number? No, I don't. The decimal is invisible right now. It would be hanging out here. These are two whole numbers. 50 compared to 500. Hopefully people know that 500 is larger than 50, or 50 is less than 500. Here I'm trying to compare two tenths compared to two thousand ten thousandths. Start off with the tenths place. Here's a two. Here's a two in the tenths place. Moving over. Here's a whole lot of nothing. And here's a whole lot of zeros. Nothing is the same as zero. So two tenths is equal to 2,000 ten thousands. We're going to go ahead and do this one, writing each number with three decimal places, just like we're kind of doing before. Eight and two tenths. Two tenths is one decimal place. So I would have to write in a zero for that nothing. There's two decimal places. And another zero for three decimal places. Eight and two hundred thousandths. 
here at five and three hundredths. Well, I already have two decimal places, so just put a zero in place of that nothing to make it three decimal places. This one here gets a little bit trickier, right? Because I have six and five thousand ten thousandths. I have one, two, three, four decimal places. Well, let's get rid of one of them, right? Six and five hundred thousandths. So changing it up also a little bit, they're throwing a little bit about dollar form and cent form to you. And there's a few rules you got to realize to be able to distinguish the difference. If you're writing money in dollar form, you got to use at least three places. You're always going to have something in the ones place, in the tenths place, and the hundreds place. The dollar sign is in the front, and you must have a decimal point between the dollars and the cents. In cent form, you can either use one or two places. The cent sign goes in the back, and there is no decimal point if you're writing your money in cent form. So here they're going to ask you, write in cent form and in dollar form, two cents. So all you need for cent form, we said it could be one or two places, no decimal point, and the cent sign goes in the back, two cents. But if I'm doing it in dollar form, the dollar sign has to go in front, and it said I have to have at least three places, right? You got to have something in the ones, the tenths, and the hundredths. So I have zero whole dollars, zero tenth dollars, because those are my dimes, and just two in the hundredths, because those are my pennies. Let's go over here and try it again. 75 cents first in cent form. No decimal point. One or two places. So just 75 with a cent sign in back. Now to go and do it in dollar form. I have to have the dollar sign and at least three places, we said, with a decimal point. So... Do I have anything in my whole number side right now? No, nope, I don't. 75 cents sounds like seven dimes or seven in the tenths place and five pennies or five in the hundredths place. Not too tough so far. The big thing to remember when you perform any operation with money, whether it's add, subtract, multiply, or divide, is to make sure that the numbers are written either all in cent form or all in dollar form before you begin. If you have one number with a decimal point and another number without a decimal point, that could cause all kinds of trouble for you, right? So... Write each answer in the indicated form. Here they're giving you something in dollar form. Here they gave it to you in cent form, but they want the answer in cent form. My advice, start off with dollar form just so you can line up your decimal points, right? So 9 minus 0, hey, that's got to be 9. I can't go 1 minus 7. I have to do some borrowing on this one, right? Bring your 1 over, 11 minus 7, that's 4. 0 minus 0, that's going to give us 0. And lastly, your dollar sign. But that's not going to be my answer. They want the answer written in cent form. So 49 and a cent sign behind it. 1 down, let's try it again. Here we have 25 cents plus 7 cents 
and they want the answer in dollar form. So I'm going to write everything out in dollar form, line up my decimal points, and let's just go ahead and add. 5 plus 7, that's going to give me 12. Bring the 1 over here, 1 plus 2, that's going to give me 3. 0 plus 0 is 0, and I'm going to write in my dollar sign. So I have dollar sign, 0, decimal 32, right? Not too tough. Let's try one more like that. This time they're giving us 39 cents times 17 cents. So start off, 7 times 9 is 63. I'm going to write down my 3. I'll carry my 6. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 6 more. That gives us 27. Before I start multiplying by that second one, erase your carry numbers. Write down one zero and get ready to multiply all over again. One times nine, hey, that's nine. One times three is three. I take my two answers and I just got to add them, right? Here's a three. Seven plus nine is 16. So I write down my six. I carry my one. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. And I got a 6, a 6, and a 3 that I got to write in dollar form. So $6 and 63 cents, right? It's about that simple. And that is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper for your Socrative quiz today. Good luck and...